Hi gang, I'm going to show you how to make this neat little motor called a Corona motor. It's also sometimes called an electrostatic motor or an atmospheric motor because you can sometimes use ions from the air. This one is intended to be one that anyone can make from very simple materials from around the house. I'll start with the rotating pieces. For that I need a piece of scrap wood for the base to put it all on, a pen, a plastic jar, and some aluminum foil from the kitchen. The pen should be longer than the jar. The jar should have nice flat sides along its length somewhere. I'll make a small dimple in the top of the jar. That'll sit on the tip of the pen. I also make a larger hole in the bottom of the jar, large enough for the pen to fit through without having the jar touch the pen much, if at all. A quick test shows it spins very well. It helps if you line the inside of the jar with aluminum foil. Just line it where the electrodes will be facing. I then hot glue the pen to the middle of the piece of wood. It should be standing up straight with respect to the wood. A book makes a nice tool for checking this. And that's the finished rotor, or rotating part. It should spin easily. Now for the electrodes. Ideally, we want a sharp edge where they're closest to the jar and round it everywhere else where there's metal. To make them, I'll use this thin aluminum roasting pan for the electrodes. I'll use this clothes hanger wire for structural support and to conduct electricity to the electrodes. I'll start by bending the wire. The end result has a shape with a base and a long piece that's parallel to the side of the jar and an end sticking up here to make electrical contact with. I next measure the side of the jar that I want the electrodes to face, basically the height of the strip of foil I'd put inside. I cut pieces from the edges of the roasting pan. I want pieces that are as long as I measured on the jar and are around half an inch or 1.5 centimeters wide. I start with pieces that are larger than I need. Then I smooth them out and trim them. I take special care to make the sharp edge straight. I also make the corners round. The clothes hanger wire has a coating on it, so I sand it where the electrodes will contact it and where I'll be connecting a wire to it. The pieces from the roasting pan have a hollow tube on one side, which I open up. I slide that tube onto the clothes hanger wire. I first flatten it with my fingers and then crush it on the outer edge to do the final squeezing in place. It still slides well enough to line up with the foil inside the jar. And finally I tape them in place, spacing them evenly around the jar. There have to be a multiple of two of them. As you can see, I have four. They'll be wired so that half are connected to high voltage and half are connected to ground. I'll connect red wires for the high voltage ones and black for the ground ones. Alternate them so that if one is connected to high voltage, the next one is connected to ground, the next is high voltage, and the next is ground, and so on for however many you have. The electrodes should meet the side of the jar at an angle. The direction it rotates is this direction, as if the electrode and the side of the jar form an arrowhead indicating the direction. Ideally, the edge of the electrode should be as close as possible to the jar without touching, and the gap should be as uniform along its whole length as possible. But since we're using flimsy, thin aluminum here, and since the jar wobbles a bit, none of that will be ideal. And now to test it. To power it, you'll need a high voltage source. Here I have a Wimshurst machine. I connect the high voltage side to one side of the Wimshurst spark gap, and the ground side to the other side of the Wimshurst spark gap. I start cranking the Wimshurst machine and the Corona motor starts up. As you can see, it turns quite well. And here are those gaps in the dark. The bluish glow you see is ionized air, otherwise known as Corona, hence the name of this motor, the Corona motor. There's actually a little bit of torque here, judging by the pressure I have to apply with my finger in order to stop it. And this is my homemade Van de Graaff generator. I connect the high voltage side to the can that's the high voltage side of the Van de Graaff generator, and I connect the ground side to the grounded can. I turn it on and turn up the speed, and it starts to turn. With less available charge, this time it doesn't turn as fast. I have this wire that ends in a single very sharp strand of wire. I disconnect the high voltage side from the Van de Graaff's can and connect it to the other end of that wire instead. I turn the Van de Graaff back on. Slowly I bring the sharp wire toward the can and at some point the Corona motor starts to work. There's an electric field between the sharp wire and the can and at a small enough distance that field becomes strong enough to ionize the air between them and begin conducting electricity. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more videos like this. That includes one on how to make the homemade Van de Graaff generator you saw in this video, 
another on how to make a Wimsers machine using CDs for the discs, and one on how to make a more powerful high voltage 30 kilovolt DC power supply. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, leave a question, or comment below. See you in a bit.